Eric Carlson is the new JT Miller. He is the new Jacob Chitrin. He is the newest guy on the block that everybody and their mother is going to be making radio hits and articles linking him to every other team. And I'm all here for it. We've made videos about Jack Eichel getting traded everywhere. We talked about Pierre-Luc Dubois getting traded everywhere. We're in the midst of making Jacob Chitrin videos, and I guess you could say Bo Horvat is on the rise too. We had already experienced this with Miller as well, but Eric Carlson is fresh on to the scene. Let's go over to a radio hit, or no, not a radio hit, a TV segment done on TSN Insider Trading by Mike Johnson. This is what he says on yesterday's edition of the show, talking about possible trade destinations for San Jose Sharks defenseman Eric Carlson if he decided to want to leave San Jose. Maybe Detroit. They're trying to get better. They have cap space. They have pending UFAs. I think it might be a team where, can you spot a contract that you want to move from or want to unload? I think of Montreal. Brendan Gallagher has had a great run in Montreal, but he has four more years at five to six million dollars. Can you trade a guy like that who still has value, but term matches up on the contract? You're really going to add just three to four million dollars to your payroll instead of the full 11.5. Those are the types of deals, those are the types of teams that could possibly look at it. And, oh boy, do I want to make this video a video about... Carlson and Detroit, Carlson and Montreal, or Carlson for Gallagher? You know what? I'm all in the business of self-preservation here, and I know the Red Wings fans have been very eagerly, patiently waiting for me to make more videos about y'all's team, but just for the sake of keeping things fluid and individualistic, let's go out there and talk about the idea thrown out here by Johnson as to whether or not the Habs could trade Gallagher for Carlson. Now, I know what you're thinking. Lego, the Habs just got rid of a right-handed defenseman whose contract goes on forever and who has a really big deal. Yes, I know they had just traded Shea Weber over to the Vegas Golden Knights. But when it comes to that right side, I mean, it'd be pretty difficult to find a Canadiens fan that believes that this right side is already the best that it could be. We know that when it comes to the Habs and their construction, their right side is not the best, their prospect development on the right side is not the best either, and meanwhile, the left side is actually looking pretty alright if you head towards the long-term future with guys like Gooley, with guys like Jakai, you have Jordan Harris there as well. The right side, though, doesn't have that same level of confidence. Now, I'm not going to go out there and say that Eric Carlson is a bona fide young right-handed stud, but he happens to be a right-handed stud that's signed on for a very long time, and who is the best defenseman in the NHL right now in terms of overall points, and one of the best players, period, in terms of goals. He's kind of slowed down his goal scoring the past little bit here. He's no longer on pace for, what is it, like 60 goals on the year? He's on pace for 46 now, but his overall point pace has actually increased a tad too. He's got 24 points in 18 games played. He's on pace for 110 points, which is crazy when you acknowledge that this Sharks team is so bad. And when it comes to the Sharks admitting to the media that they're going to be fielding offers for Carlson soon, one may wonder, is a guy like Brendan Gallagher enough of a trade chip to go out there and trade for Eric Carlson? Now, obviously, it's not going to be Gallagher by himself. We had talked about the Brent Burns trade from San Jose and the entire package that was involved for him. If you want a refresher, Brent Burns was traded over to the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for a pretty... Okay, sized package. It was Steven Lorenz, goalie prospect E2 Makanyemi, and a third round pick. That's all it took for the Carolina Hurricanes to take on Brent Burns. But of course, if you're trading away a guy like Carlson, the guy's a little bit better, the guy's a little bit more expensive, and the guy goes on until 2020. When is it? Seven? Yeah, 2027. He'll be 37 years old by the time that contract expires. Now, of course, that's not Shea Weber bad, but it is still kind of bad. And at the same time, we know that Carlson is a much more effective offensive point producer right now than Shea Weber was towards the end of his career. Although on the flip side, you know, Weber had his leadership tendencies. He was a rock in his own zone. Carlson is not necessarily a rock in his own zone. He's kind of just a free bird in the offensive zone. That's why he is getting the amount of money that he's getting, because he is so good at creating offense from that opposing blue line. 
But either way, if you're going to go out there and trade for Eric Carlson, you have to be very sure that what you're getting is not just something that you'll be happy with for the short term. You have to be confident that Carlson, in the way he's playing right now, is going to continue as he gets older, which is honestly kind of, uh... I don't know if I want to say it's realistic or not, because Carlson is on pace for a career year. He's never broken 100 points before. The closest he got to was 82 points in 82 games played in 2015-16. And the guy was, what, 26 years old when he did that? Now he's 32 and he's on pace for 100? So I get it, the NHL has changed. But seriously, you're going to have to make sure that this season from Carlson in San Jose for a bottom feeder team on pace for 100 points, that this season is not just a one and done. And that you're really getting this type of a player for the long term because 2027 is a mile away, isn't it? Now, going over onto returns for Brendan Gallagher, I'm not too sure if this is really a guy that the San Jose Sharks would think is the most valuable type of asset that they could acquire. Obviously, Montreal's going to have to add on an extra part or two, maybe an extra prospect or another pick, and that's really where the Sharks are going to see their money's worth in this trade. Because Gallagher's making 6.5 till the end of 2027 as well, he's going to be 35 by the time this contract is over. And this season, Gallagher is on pace for 25 points in 82 games played, which would be... And I love Brendan Gallagher, I really do, but that point production for a guy making that amount of money... It's not great. I know there's leadership, tangibles that are there, and Gallagher is so well-liked in this community, and he worked his way up, and he's only 5'9", so he's an underdog, and he's an agitator, and he gets under the opponent's skin. There's all that and more with Gallagher, but at the end of the day, you are just not getting your money's worth when you acknowledge what he's doing out there on the ice, and how he helps the team perform. I know he's an important guy, and I know people love this guy. Even when he had six points in 22 games when they went to the finals, nobody was complaining about Gallagher because him, Dano, and Tatar on that first line absolutely did their job in shutting down opposition and letting the rest of the Canadiens forward core do all the scoring work. It's just unfortunate that 30-goal, 50-point Brendan Gallagher isn't really here anymore, but of course we still acknowledge the very significant emotional impact that he provides the Canadians. And at the same time, I don't really think the San Jose Sharks would look at Gallagher and say, oh yeah, that's that guy, you know? Like, all the good things that Canadians fans have to say about Gallagher, I'm sure the Sharks would acknowledge that they're there, but they have no reason to see things the same way. Okay, sure, Gallagher was a leader and he was such a cult figure for the Canadians and their fans, but it's not like he's gonna be like that with us. He's already 30, and he stopped scoring points. If anything, I feel like the San Jose Sharks would really want to get their value in whatever prospect or pick they get from an Eric Carlson Part 2 trade, and not so much in Brendan Gallagher. He would only really be facilitating the trade here by allowing the salary cap structure to work, because his contract is so beefy and massive and it goes on for the same time that the Canadians only really have him to balance out the scales here. At the end of the day, though, I do think that there would need to be some more additional pieces if Montreal were to go out there and acquire a guy like Carlson, even if you don't have any salary retained. If you retain salary, all of a sudden, that's even more capital that you're going to have to send over to San Jose. And ultimately, I feel like the Sharks might be able to get a bit more if any playoff team or bubble team is super desperate to get a right-handed defenseman that can score at a 100-point pace. Montreal would automatically have Eric Carlson as their best defender, and he would probably be manning every power play until the end of his 27 contract. But at the same time, there are going to be other teams that can give that same opportunity too, and some of these other teams might be a tad desperate. So we'll see where exactly this goes. Of course, it's just Johnson on TSN throwing an idea out there saying that, hey, if Gallagher is the guy, then that would make sense. And also, it has to kind of be this type of deal with this type of team that already has a contract that they're willing to trade away. And it's kind of funny that Johnson doesn't even have Gallagher's contract number at the right amount. He says, I think Montreal, Gallagher, he's had a great run in there, but he's got four more years at five to six million. I mean, he's making 6.5, so that's a lot higher than five to six million. I guess if you're going over to like the salary actually paid, it varies. But yeah, he's making nine million dollars in 2024, 2025. That's kind of crazy. Brendan Gallagher kind of got the bag now that I really think about it. But either way... 
Talk to the console your thoughts about the Eric Carlson sweepstakes and Montreal's bid in this overall conversation. Do you think Gallagher is the starting point here? What else do you think needs to be added to make this a trade worthwhile of San Jose's time and actual investment? Which prospect and which pick do you think needs to be added to make things work? You can talk to the console your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vichara Trolls 99. And bye.